Welcome back to In Bed with Maddie Webb. Who am I was one of the biggest questions that I had when I came out of abuse because basically all of my identity was wrapped up in a in a belief system that minimized my self-worth. I was very confused about the responsibility I thought I had. The responsibility to live for the approval of other people, to be good enough for my parents to love me, to get into heaven, whatever it is. And basically like the beginning of last year when I left the content house, you can go to episode two to hear more about that. I entered my rock bottom era and... Basically, I had no idea what I liked, what I didn't like, what I believed in, what I wanted. And, you know, the past almost two years now has been an endless journey of self-discovery and falling in love with the authentic version of myself. So I've tried so many things that help me understand myself. And I tried to narrow it down to five main ones um, that I listed in today's episode. Who are you? five ways to learn more about yourself. If you've never read the book, The Untethered Soul, it's my book of 2023. The Untethered Soul, I started it at the beginning of this year and I've basically just read it over and over again all year, especially like the last few chapters are just really, really powerful. And in the book, it talks about the concept of who we are. So in the book, he starts saying, when someone asks you who you are and you say, oh, well, I'm a bartender and I, am also an artist it's like no that's not who you are that's what you do so you say okay well I love painting and I love cooking and I love to be with my family and it's like okay that's great but that's not who you are those are the things that you love and then it continues to go on and on and on about that Um, and then the untethered soul basically talks about who we are is the soul inside of us that is simply observing the outside world and all of these thoughts that we constantly have the mean thoughts inside of our brains like the observations that we create these are basically we can literally sit back and watch all of the thoughts basically pass through us watch all of life around us and we are simply the soul observing everything in this life so if i am the observer of what i see in the world and based on what i observe and my experiences what i've learned I form these opinions and these beliefs based on those things that I observe. And in society, those opinions and beliefs help other people understand who I am. But I think it goes so far beyond that. And learning about ourselves is a daily and lifelong journey that can literally help us achieve and succeed in whatever we want to. To achieve success, whatever that means to you. For some people, it's career success. For some people, it's simply financial success without having to put in a lot of work. For some people it's living on an island off the land and like waking up to the most beautiful view you've ever seen in the world every day like what does success mean to you whatever that means the more that you learn about yourself the more that you understand like the more that that does become an absolute possibility and that has been my very real experience okay so the first thing I want to talk about is my human design every single person that comes into my path I literally make them learn about my human design because it has helped me so much. And actually, my editor is sitting back here right now, Marina, and I literally have been trying to find time to tell her about this. And I wrote this entire thing with her in mind because I've been dying to share this with her. I have to start with this because it has been one of the biggest answers to my prayers um, when it comes to learning about who I am and answering the questions I have about myself. And it's called my human design. The basic messaging of my human design is that the world tries to tell us how we should do things in order to survive and thrive. But my human design teaches that the same advice is not correct for every single person, especially growing up in the school system in America. um, We're basically taught the soldier way and like the we are basically taught to be nine to five capitalistic soldiers and to obey and to learn how to like respect authority. And for some people that serves them 
them really well. And for some people, it absolutely does not. I am one of those people that was just like, I, there was no space for me to like really be myself in school or like express my creativity or my entrepreneurship or like the things that I was interested in learning about and growing in. And um, because of that, like I just came out of it very confused about what thinking that there was something wrong with me when in fact it's the exact opposite there's something so right with me that I I just had to access that information and figure it out for myself so my human design has really helped me do that it's the road to being your happiest most successful most authentic um, self is totally unique to you my road is going to be totally unique and different than yours and human design helps you understand your specific gifts your specific traits so that you can be who you truly came here to be um, which is the most effortless road to living your dream life like that that's what the whole point of it is is to make it just easier on you I truly believe that like we are given so many signs so much access to the spiritual realm so much access to answers beyond us and we just have to utilize them we just have to learn how to do them. So my human design is a body graph. So you just have to put in your birthday, the time you were born, where you were born. So this is obviously a system based in astrology. People do not believe in astrology. They either know how to use it or they don't. It was extremely commonly used in ancient times and it is very much still used in this day, but privately by elite people. And you can believe what you want, but it's funny that society convinces us that believing in astrology is the trait of a basic white girl in LA and not something rooted in deep value and deep truth. JP Morgan famously said that millionaires do not use astrology billionaires do. I believe that earth is a place that you can have whatever you want. You just have to know how to use what you've got. So what I did for figuring out my human design was um, there's a website, but there's also a really, really good app. It's called My Human Design. It has like a white logo. There's a few on there, but the white logo with like the body outline is the one that I really like. And I'm going to basically show you my to the top three to four coolest things I've learned on my the human design app. There's just so 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 much to learn about yourself on this so the first thing that you want to look at in your chart so basically when you open the app and you put in all your information it's going to give you a chart that looks kind of like a body graph if you're watching on youtube i will put it on the screen the chart is essentially like explores your energy type so the first thing you look at in your chart is that energy type and there are five main types and each has a different way of bringing in more opportunities and flow into their life so there's general Generators, manifesting generators, manifestors, projectors, and reflectors. And I'm going to use my chart as an example. I am a generator. So basically, your energy type tells you how you're built to operate, and it's arguably the most important aspect of your design. So m as a generator, my purpose is to create good energy in the world. I am a generator of positive energy. Whenever I do something that makes me happy, excited, or lit up, I create so much good energy that it literally spills out, out onto everyone around me. Being lit up is my highest calling because when you're happy and excited, it inspires, fuels, and lifts everyone else around you without even trying. And there's so much more information on this. This really helps me because it only confirms my basic intuition that when I am truly called or aligned with something, whether it's in my career or a decision I'm making in life in general, if I do not feel lit up about it, I know that it probably isn't the right fit for me because in my human design, in my individual purpose, I need to have good energy so that I can create good energy and put it out into the world. And this has really helped me because like when I'm excited, I am full of life. I have endless amounts to give to the people around me. When I feel drained, when I feel empty by my job, by the people in my life, like I have nothing to give and I am not living in my design. I'm not living in my purpose, which is to generate good and positive energy. And honestly, like if you listen to this podcast or follow me on social media, I hope that you agree with this because that's basically like my life mission is to spread the positive energy. Second one that I really want to talk about is um, finding out what your manifestation process is. 
This is so interesting to me. So on your chart, you can scroll down and you can see all of these different aspects. There's my authority, how I should best make decisions. For me, it's my gut instincts. My gut, it's either a hell yes or a hell no. With my, If I have any sort of hesitation, it means to no for me. That's how I make decisions. But other people aren't like that. So when it comes to manifesting... I am a non-specific manifester. This is how we manifest the things that we want into our life. And a non-specific manifester essentially means that I'm not necessarily meant to be extremely specific about the things I want in the world. If anything, like as a non-specific manifester, it kind of can hold me back in a way. Traditionally, we tell people to get clear on exactly what they want, down to a T, make vision boards, write lists. This style is very much about the person and what the person wants. We get told if you don't know what you want, you'll never get it, which is really, um, really good advice for specific manifestors. But when you're a non-specific manifestor, it's not true for for you. For, so it's that's not really true for me. And trying to pinpoint a box and like say everything has to be in this specific way actually can hold me back as a non-specific manifester. And I really, really resonate with this because I feel like when I want things too bad, when I want specific things too much, when I try to manifest them too hard and I follow like the traditional like manifestation tips, I don't feel that generator's sense of like fulfillment and joy and excitement, which tells me that like, Maybe I, I'm not trying to manifest the wrong things. And until I understood this, I was just constantly confused. Like, wait, what am I? How am I supposed to do this then? Like, how am I supposed to manifest? And based on my intuition, I more so this year have become less specific, even without learning about this. And I have noticed that everything just kind of happens the way that it should be. And I find myself being a lot more content living in my human design of being a non specific manifester and realizing that. All the things that I want are coming to me in just different ways than I than I realized that I wanted them. And for me, having full faith in the universe that I can have an idea of the things that I want in this life, but don't have to be so specific. It feels like for me, it takes off a lot of pressure and everything has been coming to me a lot easier since learning this. Knowing that I have these specific talents and I have these specific, you know, ways about me that help me be my authentic self, it only improves my decision-making skills, my confidence, my ability to communicate. It validates my intuition. It validates my career choice. It brings me inner peace and it answers a million questions that I've had about myself. The last one that I really wanted to touch on because I think it's so cool is called my digestion, which is the best way for me to eat, the way that I'm designed to eat. And for me, I have to be in a calm atmosphere. Like I either need to be around people that I really trust and feel comfortable and safe with, or I need to be totally alone. And this rings so true for me because I've always been like, oh, I don't know why I don't like the things that other people like. Like Going to a loud restaurant is never something that I really feel like I want to do. And if anything, I barely eat there and then I just eat when I get home. And like same with parties and like atmospheres like that. Like I don't like to drink. It's just I don't consume things well in like crazy environments. Like I really need to be in a calm atmosphere. And this literally, that's exactly what it tells me. And I I genuinely... When I read that, I was like, oh, this is so real. This is so real. And then my boyfriend is literally the exact opposite. Like his digestion says he needs to be in a buzzing atmosphere. Like he does great in atmospheres where it's like super loud and crazy. And like there's a bunch of people around and like that's when he digests the best. Like, oh, my God, what a terrible thing to not have in common in a relationship. But it's really interesting and really funny and really good to like understand that about myself and the people who are in my life. And so some other that gives me a bunch of tips of how I should eat, um, eating patterns, um, eating as a ritual, clarity. Like It's so helpful, especially as somebody who has been in recovery from an eating disorder for the past year. Like it, It's really powerful and really helpful and like brings me a lot of inner understanding. But yeah, I really, really hope that you 
uh, downloaded that app during this conversation. I think it's like $5 a month too if you want to unlock every single um, piece of information. But also if you want to just get the app and understand your chart, then you can go on YouTube or Google and kind of uh, like look up what does the right angle cross mean in my life purpose if you don't want to pay for it. Oh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but this is a new concept to me and has brought me a ton of clarity. It's your North Node and your South Node. So the way that I basically figured out my North Node and South Node is I, I Googled it and there was like a calculator and you put in your birthday, place you were born, time you were born. And it's brought me a lot of clarity around specific struggles and challenges that I have. So basically... I am a Virgo North Node and a Pisces South Node. So your South Node reveals your past lives and the gifts that you've brought in from those past selves. And your North Node shows the direction that you're learning in this lifetime. And I totally understand if you don't believe in past lives. So just for the sake of like whatever, let's just pretend that your south node can just be um, the gifts that you that God gave you that you came into the world with. And your north node is the thing that God was like, I want you to learn these things in your lifetime. This is the direction that you came here to learn. These are the things that you need to grow in. Because I personally believe that we come to Earth, which is like a very low vibrational, dense planet, so that we can go through all these challenges and suffering to experience true growth. Because even on this earth, like when do we experience the most growth? When we go through the hardest times. So once you find out what your north node is and your south node is, then you can do all the research that it takes to like understand what that means. So me, as my north node is in Pisces, the qualities and experiences that I'm supposed to step into in this lifetime are, and drum roll please, because if you watch my content, you're going to laugh. Number one, boundaries for myself and others. Literally one of my biggest life lessons on this earth has been learning how to set boundaries and it's been the hardest thing. It's still the hardest thing. Like I talk a big game, but it is still so hard hard for me to set boundaries. Number two is setting routines. Also a huge struggle for me um, in general, but something that I intuitively just like kind of force myself to do because I know it's really important for my development. Number three is setting responsibility on yourself. Also very accurate for this lifetime. I feel like I was born into a role where like my only option was to take responsibility. I'm the oldest of four daughters. I've had a job since I was 12 years old. I financially supported myself my whole life like I am it's responsibility is ingrained in me and I don't think that that was on accident number four is facing the here and now being present also um lol I literally was diagnosed with disassociation disorder last year which is basically where you like peace out and you're like it you know when you see someone just staring off into space I would do that about 500 times a day and I would just escape this reality and I would just go into my own brain and I wouldn't really be present and that is the opposite of what I need to be doing in this lifetime like my goal is to be radically present and the last one is not leaning into escape Escapism. And escapism for a lot of people can be drugs or alcohol or scrolling too much or sleeping in too late, way too much, like anything that can kind of get us out of this reality and um, anything that try, like tries to basically make it feel like we're not on earth. Like, and that is my kryptonite, basically, like anything that makes me feel like I'm not here um, to anything to escape like the the pain the suffering that earth has so like watching hours and hours of love island and um from or not leaving my apartment for days or like going deep into disassociation or smoking too much weed that's just a classic escapism that's my instinct that's my comfort zone and my north node is telling me that one of my life goals and purposes is to get away from that comfort zone and really lean into being in the present, being in the vulnerable state of this earth and just being fully here no matter what happens. And obviously there's a balance with everything. The south node is your comfort zone. The north node is the things that you should focus on in this life. I feel like in the past few months, I'm I'm finding that equilibrium 
equilibrium where I have that balance of the physical and the spiritual, the escapism and the structure. And the problem is our instinct is to stay in that comfort zone. But if we do ignore the North, North Node uh, and don't embrace the qualities, we will experience extreme blockages like we're more susceptible to financial blockages love blockages anything in life blocking us when we stay in that south node and when we stay in that comfort zone it feels very familiar but we but we tend as humans to fall into that comfort zone and stay there and that's the problem i think it's really important to understand your north and south node so you know which qualities to embrace even when they feel more difficult and which parts parts of yourself that qualify as your comfort zone. Go online, go on a North Node and South Node calculator, literally just look that up, figure out what it is, and then look it up on TikTok, look it up on Google, look it up on ChatGBT. My third one I want to talk about is shadow work. So I have traits that I am proud of, and I have traits that I am not very confident about. And some of these traits trigger or embarrass me, so I hide them from people. And these parts of ourselves are called our shadow selves, and they deeply want to be heard whether or not we let them. Suppressing your shadow self can have extreme consequences. Also, our shadow selves are what make us human beings and multidimensional beings. We have the opportunity to embrace those sides of ourselves and integrate and accept every single part so that we can live and thrive with more clarity and more authenticity. So for clarification and vocabulary purposes, self is the center of the personality and your psyche, your conscious awareness. So your self is that consciousness that is observing the world and everything in it, kind of like what we talked about at the beginning of this. Your shadow is the dark and emotional aspect of your psyche, which is very much still a part of you. That is what makes us human, the self and the shadow. So for example, I grew up uniquely beautiful. And what I mean by that is I am ethnic. Uh, my grandparents immigrated from India. I have like an ethnic appearance. Um, and I, you know, qualify in the pretty category. And I also grew up with big boobs from a young age. And I grew up in a small, very religious town, going to very religious schools without Wi-Fi. And I w had authoritarian parents, which um, authoritarian parents is where they focus on obedience and discipline and control rather than nurturing. Because of all of these realities combining, I was constantly accused of not having humility or being an attention seeker or being boy crazy or basically thinking that like the whole world revolved around me. That was like the famous phrase in our house world. The whole world doesn't revolve around you, Maddie Webb. The whole world does not revolve around you. I, I heard that so many times. And so believing that I was self-centered, I started to minimize myself and I became a massive people pleaser. And I never set boundaries in fear of people thinking, that I thought that I was better than them or thinking that I was selfish. So because of this, when someone would make like a little comment on my post being like, she's so obsessed with herself, I'm pissed. I'm fuming. And why? It's not because of the comment. It's not because some loser like wanted to tear me down a peg. It's the part of me that was emotionally invested in not being full of myself. It's the part of me that like spent my entire childhood trying to prove to people that I didn't think the world revolved around me versus now you know, after doing a lot of shadow work and a lot of healing and understanding, I can embrace my beauty and I'm not afraid of it. And I'm not afraid if it intimidates or offends other people. And that's, you know, through a lot of self-work. And I also want to say just really quick, the concept of like the world not revolving around you is so dumb because the world absolutely does revolve around you. Your world revolves around you. Your perception creates your reality. Your belief system is the world that you live in. So if you actually walk around thinking, well, the whole world doesn't revolve around me, that's crazy. You, can't, you cannot be in this world and not be in yourself. So everything around you is actually 
physically revolving around you. So you get to create life however you want to create it. And that should be a beautiful embraced thing. And it's really funny that people try to demonize it because f*** that. But basically anything that threatens the way that you present yourself into the world, basically like whatever brings your shadow self into the light feels like a threat to your identity. And ultimately biologically, your safety. So what makes up your shadow self, it depends on what you subconsciously reject within yourself. So we usually hear this come up as negative self-talk. Often these rejected parts of ourself are the result of childhood experiences, like I said, but that's what your shadow self is. It's those rejected parts of you, whether they're rejected by other people and then you reject them within yourself and you talk down to yourself because you're trying to stuff those parts of yourself down. And then that turns into a threat to your safety and like how in your mind you frame your identity. The problem is that when you ignore your shadow self, those parts of you that you don't find that beautiful, there are some real negative effects, including self-loathing, poor self-esteem, self-deceit, deceiving others, anxiety, depression, offensive behavior towards other people, struggling to have healthy relationships with other people, self-sabotage, self-absorption, an inflated ego to basically protect those insecurities. When you reject your shadow self, you may also project that onto other people. And I bet you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've experienced this with other people or you've seen yourself do it to other people. But projection happens when you see things in other people that you subconsciously recognize within yourself and you project those insecurities onto them and you make your problems their problems because you're not dealing with your problems. Shadow work like really helped me understand myself and those insecurities that I had and the ways that it was affecting the people around me in ways that I really didn't want to. So what I would recommend to start learning, understanding, and working on your shadow self is there is a shadow work journal. Um, It's on my Amazon storefront. We'll put it in the description of everything. It's great. It's literally like a workbook. It's really um, thought-provoking. I take it in bite sizes because it, it sometimes can be a lot. And then also I've done a lot of self-shadow work in therapy. So those would be my like main two recommendations for that. But there's nothing stopping you from like making actions on your on your own. And it's literally like $12. My fourth tip is mirror gazing, which I talked a little bit about in my what to do with when you're triggered episode. Um, but mirror gazing is basically a meditation practice. But instead of closing your eyes and focusing on your breathing, you keep your eyes open and you focus on your reflection in the mirror. And basically what this does is that it quiets your thoughts and you begin focusing less and less on your flaws and more and more on your life experiences and um, really, really seeing yourself. And it's recommended to do this for five to 10 minutes. And it's really crazy because after about five minutes, your brain gets kind of bored of what you look like. So it starts to literally morph your face, which sounds super scary, but honestly, it's kind of beautiful because you start to kind of like see your soul instead of your physical appearance. And you, for me, like that's how I really, really connect and talk to my inner child, which I talk about a lot in that episode that I just referenced, but it's really, really powerful and really, really healing. It can also be a huge part of shadow work and help you realize and understand that you are most likely your own personal antagonist, which is super funny because once you start realizing that and looking into the mirror and like accepting that about yourself, that antagonist becomes less and less powerful. There is this um, show on Apple TV called Physical. And if you've ever had um, an eating disorder, the biggest trigger warning I could ever give you would be this show. Like, I don't know if you're in a healthy enough place, but it's very, very, very real and raw. But The whole concept of the show is this woman who has dealt with bulimia um, her whole life and binge eating disorder. And she basically, we see her constantly, constantly dealing with this inner antagonist, which is her shadow self. All of these parts of herself that she's trying to hide. She has a husband and a kid and you see her like literally have 
two lives. She has her life that she lives in front of them. And then she has her real self that she shows nobody. And this really is such a good artistic representation of what I have very real life experienced. And a lot of people very real life experience, which is dealing with that shadow self, that negative self-talk. And it almost feels like there's literally an intruder in your own head who is so f***ing mean to you and you cannot get it out of you. You see her kind of go through this self journey and she starts out as kind of like an anti-protagonist. Like you're not, you're, you don't really love her, but you you understand like why she's making the choices she makes. She's not very kind, but it's not because she's not like, it's not, it's not because she's a bad person. It's because she's so f***ing mean to herself that she can't be nice to anybody else. And I understand that. And then you see her kind of like go to therapy and start to learn about herself and start to heal and start to be vulnerable and start to tell people about herself. I've been watching it and I'm like, damn, like I haven't seen any show represent like our shadow selves like this. And then I just have a few last mini tips as like my fifth thing that I did to learn about yourself. These are like little mini ones that I have done. Like I said, like after coming out of an abusive situation, I was like, who am I? Like, I don't know what you think about myself. So I started taking myself on like mini dates. And, you know, a question that I would ask yourself if you're trying to figure out who you are is, are you spending time with yourself? Like, how would you know yourself if you don't spend any time with yourself? You know, so like, I'll say I would take myself to dinners alone. I would travel alone. I would go to movies alone. I would go to events alone. I would go to social events alone a lot and like just to kind of like throw myself into it and like be like, all right, let's see who I can meet. And if not, like, you can always exit like the great thing about going to places and doing things alone is you can like Irish exit whenever the fuck you want like you don't have to stick around if you're uncomfortable but like the more that I went the more that I was like I'm not that uncomfortable like I I like myself like I'm cool with being by myself I'm cool with like walking up to people and introducing myself and whatever another mini tip is dancing alone and allowing your body to move freely and weirdly without judgment I talk about this in a few other episodes but this helped me more with figuring out who my body is if that makes sense like learning accepting my body and Basically, I would shut all the curtains in my house. I would turn off all the lights and I would play like a like a really specific feeling playlist, depending on like what feeling I was trying to evoke. And I would close my eyes and I would literally just like run around my apartment, dance, like move. Like I don't even know the weird ass things like my body was doing, but I just allowed it to do it. And this practice has helped me come into my body maybe more than anything else what I feel and like feeling connected with myself and like it just brought me more acceptance into who I am another thing my therapist recommended is to make a list of things that I've never done or tried and start going down the list and finding out the uh, the things that I might like that I didn't even know that I liked because again like I said like I'm not really a big fan of going to dinners like we're in loud environments I'm not a partier I don't drink and I kind of struggle to be in social settings with other people because I feel like those are the general things that people like to do and those aren't really things that I really love to do so I recently started this list and one of them is like I'm gonna have a pay and pasta night with my friends where I make like gluten-free pasta and I get canvases for all of us and we just like pay and talk and hang out and listen to music and then I had another idea of like I've been taking my friend to dance class with me I have another friend who I like to hike with I have another friend who I really like to explore coffee shops with and like I think learning more about things that you like also helps you figure out the type of people that you like to be around too because obviously it's important to be around people who enjoy the same things that you enjoy I also like one of my favorite things in the entire world to do is have deep conversations which um, I was just talking to Marina my friend and my editor about this that I struggle with surface level conversation and like I literally need deep conversation in my life in order to feel happy and um connected with somebody else and like I, I just can't really live without that yeah so all my friends really have that in common and I and I just need to know and accept that about myself and not try to like force myself to fit into situations that just aren't me aren't what I like aren't what I want to do and then last thing we have obviously journaling therapy meditation and doing 
positive affirmations, all core things that really help you know yourself, stay in your body, feel yourself, like whatever you want to believe, you can literally brainwash yourself into believing. I'm not even joking. That's what affirmations are for. That's what meditation is for. That's what journaling is for. You can literally create your belief system to be whatever you want it to be. You have always had this desire from a young age to be a singer, create a belief system that actually believes that that's something that you could do. And you will watch your life change, your actions change, your motivation, your determination, your discipline change. Your belief system is completely up to you. We don't have to stick to the belief system that our parents and our environment created for us. We have full control and the full capability of changing it into whatever we want to do. Okay, it's finally time for my favorite part of the episode, Pillow Talk, where I get to answer your questions about this topic. Remember, you can always email me or DM me at any time. Let's get into it. Question number one. Someone said, what is balance? This super resonates with me right now because I am realizing that balance is always shifting and To try to view it as linear is super overwhelming and super impossible because balance is not about finding the perfect formula that works for every single situation. It's about shifting and adjusting to the circumstances and challenges that change around you. And I realized that the difference between financially successful people and truly wealthy people is what they allow to affect them. Truly wealthy people do not panic when shit hits the fan. They they just don't. They they assess the situation and they make educated and calm decisions. And that is balance. That to me is balance. I think that we can confuse, confuse balance with structure and routine. Like we think balance is like, you know, making sure we're working out every single day and doing this and doing this and like all these things that I have to get into my schedule because I have to make it balanced. It's like I used to think that and like that feels so impossible to me. I think that balance truly is shifting to the circumstances that we have in front of us and not allowing the circumstances to just whip us around, you know, like being in control and adjusting to it. So it's like, yeah, some weeks I'm working out literally every single day because that feels good to me. And I have space and time in my, you know, in, in the circumstances that I'm in, in that time frame to allow myself to do that. And then I have weeks like this past week where balance to me looked like basically working all day every day and making sure I'm getting three meals in and spending time with my friends here and there. But like I worked out three times this week as opposed to whatever I did last week. And they were all 20 minute sessions in front of my TV in my living room. They weren't at the gym. I wasn't doing weights like I wasn't doing my normal thing. And I'm not going to bully myself about that because this week, my circumstances and my challenges were more career oriented. I had a lot on my plate this week. So balance for me looked like assessing the situation and making choices based off of those circumstances and not beating myself up for not being able to do the same exact structured routine that I think I have to do in order to be quote balanced. But that's honestly like a new um, thought and a feeling of mine that has really brought me a lot of peace because the stress of not feeling balanced is literally ruins my life and I, I can't do it. And this belief has really changed the way that I feel in my day to day. So that rings true to me. Let me know if that rings true to you. Question number two, I lost my personality due to trauma and mental health. How do I get it back? Okay, so when you're in the healing process, you often lose who you thought you were. That's pretty inevitable. And everything basically changes about you because the person that you were, the person who was in trauma or dealing with mental health, they are addicted to pain and suffering. And it was weirdly comfortable for that version of yourself. And maybe because that's how you grew up, maybe because that's like how uh, your first relationship was that you stayed in for a long time. Like, why does this keep happening to me? And it's because we're used to it. And so to heal, you have to go into the unknown and basically recreate your entire self 
And that's really, really scary. I know I'm saying it in kind of like a generalized way, like, oh, yeah, like we just have to go into the unknown and not know anything about ourselves. But like it's extremely, extremely terrifying to not to to do that because there is so much unknown. What I learned in therapy was to basically embrace it and accept that this is that that's where I am I, I'm still kind of in it like radical acceptance that I don't know who I am I don't know what I like I don't know what I don't like I don't know what I want I literally don't know anything and through that acceptance I've basically begun to enjoy the unknown and enjoy the part where I start to understand and find the answers to all these questions that I have that's why this podcast is really important and exciting for me to make because I feel like I actually am doing that I feel like I actually am figuring out who I am, what I want, what I like, what I don't want, what I don't like, and what are my challenges in this life? What is my purpose? What is the best ways for me to, you know, make decisions? Like all of these things are so exciting to me because I used to live in a world that was pain and suffering all the time. There was no room for self-exploration or self-growth because I was consumed by the trauma. And now it's like, yeah, I am walking in this space of I have no idea what's going on. I don't know who I am. This is fully unknown territory. But I think that that can be really, really exciting if we let it be. Because what's our other choice? Just walk into it and be terrified and like be too scared to figure out the answers to these questions? Like, why not just embrace it? Because if we're going to go down this healing journey, it's going to be hard. We are not going to know what we're doing all the time. We are going to experience a lot of difficult things, but there's a way to enjoy the part where you get to learn about yourself for maybe the first time ever. And every time I do find something that I love, it's like a huge middle finger to the abuse that I experienced that prevented me from truly knowing myself or putting myself out there and making my needs a priority. Like, f*** you. Look at me now. This episode was just as much for me as it is for you. And I learned so much by creating it. I hope you gained something by listening to it. If you did and want to learn more about these topics, make sure you check out The Untethered Sold my human design app, the North Node, South Node calculator, my shadow work journal, maybe take yourself on a few dates, maybe try to dance in the dark. Whatever resonated with you, I really hope you go out into the world and try it. And please let me know if you do, because I would just love to know if something worked for you as it worked for me. You can support me anytime by leaving a review wherever you're listening on Spotify or Apple or YouTube or whatever. You can email me at inbedpodcast at mattybweb.com with questions for my pillow talk segments. You can DM me. I'm Maddie B. Webb on literally every channel. M-A-D-I-B-W-E-B-B. Maddie is spelled with one D because I am a one D kind of girl. You can follow me on all my channels and support me by subscribing to my YouTube. I just hit 220. 22k and i'm like okay angel number i love you guys so much thank you so much for listening um i hope that you resonate with this and i'll see you next week bye